What's up fam, it's your boy Wilpo and today I'm going to show you this game I made in this language I just picked up called Scratch. So, um, this game is based on this fancy character here uh, who we all know and love as Pikachu. So, basically this game is centered around the goal of what Pikachu is known for, which is catching animals. So, notice how I can control Pikachu with my arrow keys. So I've assigned directions to the sprite to go left and right and up and down. On top of that, there's a sensitivity value that's over here, which I've allocated Z and X to manipulate. So if I bump it up with X, it increases its value, so I move faster. And then if I reduce it, it goes much slower. I can even go to zero, but I won't go negative because I've set a limit on it. So here's the goal. Your goal is to get that jellyfish into your net. When I hit space, it's meant to trigger like a catch. So notice how I've highlighted what happens. That's just mostly just visual cue, but also it helps the game run for us to imagine if SpongeBob had another, I mean, not SpongeBob, Pikachu. If Pikachu had another um, art asset of him swinging down the net. So it'll look like an animation. Nonetheless, let's play the game. So here we have some basic instructions. My goal is to catch the jellyfish of course. So notice how I put in the extra logic. So if it gets close but doesn't get in the net, the jellyfish temporarily vanishes. Imagine that in real life, like basically the jellyfish is scared that it's about to get caught so it runs away. So you only catch it if you over if you overlay the net with the jellyfish. So scared it off and if I actually want to catch it, boom. So I've also added audio triggers. So if you notice at the start of the game, SpongeBob uh Pikachu um cued when the game started, when he goes, I'm ready. You know Pikachu's famous catchphrase. And with every catch swing that manages to catch the jellyfish, he also triggers his laugh track. So, with all of that, this is, um, oh right, notice how the score has been increasing each time a successful catch has happened. Well, that's being stored as a variable and it shows up into this string. And let's go look at the underlying, oh. <laughs> all right, so this, we'll look at the code, but first off, let's look at this jellyfish. It's moving around kind of really randomly. And the reason it's moving so randomly is because I've allocated random random coordinates for it to float to. So basically all the logic is locked up in the sprites. I have two sprites, uh, the jellyfish and Sp Spongeboy. Yes, that's that's his name, Spongeboy. <laughs> we'll start with the jellyfish. So the jellyfish only has three main logic. Um, so the first one is when you start it, it resets to a location. So if I stop the interface and I hit go again, notice how the sprites have relocated to their default starting positions. So with that, the jellyfish zooms over to this coordinate that is hard coded over here. And um, if you press the spacebar, that's what makes it turn into with the highlighted circle. Next is Spongeboy. So Spongeboy over here, I've been calling him Pikachu this whole time. Anyway, so uh, I've allocated keys to make him move. But the thing is, when you play video games, it's so common just to see the sprite flip. But the thing is, you have to actually code that logic into the sprite, otherwise it wouldn't happen. Over here, that's all the instructions. And that's what triggers if you catch it. Uh, I mean, catch the jellyfish, but to really make it feel like you have the second animation loop of him catching it, I, this whoosh sound is what sells it. Like, doesn't it feel like he's moving? Anyway, I'm just, just patting my own back there. Um, over here is how you get that final sentence where he calls out your points. And that's how you change your move triggers. Huh. That's it. The only other thing is that there's a background that exists, which is... Fine, I guess. So, Scratch is pretty much a language made by MIT, I believe, and it's made to like teach people code. I highly recommend, like, this is actually quite fun. It took me around 10 minutes to just understand oh, what all these buttons do. 
But then it was a lot of fun just assembling it, like spend a while making up this fun little uh, sponge boy square trousers game. And yeah, highly recommend it. Thanks guys.